Okay. So, welcome. Welcome back to the channel. And today we have a super exciting video. And don't mind the one earring. This is how we're living these days. I mean, I can't find the other one and it's really cute. So I was like, let me wear it. Let me wear it. Okay, so today's video is so exciting. We are going to create a beautiful window with some sacred symbols and I'm just so excited. I've been wanting to do this forever. Do you guys ever just want to create something and then you just put it on the back burner for forever and then you know you just haven't committed and that's where I'm at and I'm ready to commit and I'm ready to do it. The shop has been busy then with everything going on it's just like one thing after another. I really needed to just be creative and create something that I was really inspired about. The focus of this piece is going to be the Hamza symbol. The Hamza, it's a very sacred symbol to many cultures, many religions. It is one of the oldest symbols known to man. And it usually features symmetrical thumbs on either side. And it has traditionally an eye in the center. So we're not gonna do the traditional eye. I'm gonna actually put in a beautiful quartz, chunky, like faceted crystal right in the center, which will be the very center of the window. And I think that's gonna be really, really beautiful and bring the light will shine through it. And I just really am excited about how I feel like she is going to turn out. The Hamza symbol, it symbolizes protection against the evil eye. It also symbolizes good fortune, good health. It is very commonly paired with the lotus flower. So I'm going to try to incorporate the lotus somewhere with the Hamza symbol because that also symbolizes new beginning. So that will bring another element to it. A lot of depictions of the Hamza, it's usually very decorative. So I'm going to do some wire work and try to give her a very, almost like a jewelry vibe to her. So that's what I know we're gonna do. The, the window shape itself is going to be not your traditional rectangle or square or circle, circular mirror window. I'm going to make it like a, you'll see. You will see the shape when I show you. We're gonna do a, a wooden frame for her. And yeah, I just can't wait. I am just so excited. So let's go. I can't wait to show you. So if you want to see how we make this beautiful Hamza window, keep watching. So it's time to draw out my pattern. Now when I know I want a certain shape that I'm gonna to wanna to reuse for new patterns in the future, I will cut them out of an MDF board. So I have a nice hard copy of different shapes that I can design new patterns in them. So that's what I did. I designed and cut these out. And I think in my shop, I'm gonna include some shapes for you guys. So if you guys want to draw your own pattern, but within certain shapes, you can do that nice and easy. This is the crystal. I absolutely love her. She's beautiful. She's faceted. She's chunky. She's got a lot of depth in her and I was just so excited about working with her. So I drew out, I traced out my pattern. I made sure to find the center and then I traced out my Hamza. I knew I was going to draw some lotus petals on there so I made sure to kind of center, center her a little high and then I traced out my actual crystal right inside of the Hamza. This way making sure that it'll fit in there later. I also made the background different elements to stand for water, earth, and air. So those are the actual details in the background. So I was really on the fence. I didn't know, do I want to use this pink? Do I want it to be this wispy pink color for the Hamza? But I ended up going on that bright white iridescent. I just thought it was so like ethereal and gorgeous. I was just, I knew right away, I was like, okay, this is the one. Who am I kidding? This is what I'm gonna use. But for the lotus petals, I wasn't sure. I knew I was gonna use these textures for the background. 
and because the solder lines in the background will stand for the elements but the petals to the lotus I knew I wanted some color in there so I was on the fence I had these three colors and then I also had like a wispy white I could not decide you guys did help me decide on Instagram it was a complete tie between the pink and that like seafoam green and I ended up going with the seafoam green only because she had less texture because I knew I wanted to do that jewelry detailing so if I wasn't gonna do that I would have gone with the pink because I was just really loving that pink iridescent color but I think I'm just gonna have to make another one with the pink. This is where I really start getting excited. I just really love how it's already looking. So I was pretty, pretty pumped at this point. Now it's time for me to just grind a few of my pieces. She fit pretty snug, but a few things had, just a few edges were a little sharp. So I made sure to grind those down. And then it was time to pick out the petals. And as you can see, I cut out the lotus in all the different colors because I just had to see them. It wasn't enough to just hold up glass. I was like, okay, let me just take the time to cut out every single one of these petals to see what it will look like. I was just so on the fence. You guys were too on Instagram. This pink was probably my favorite. The green was as well, but it was just a matter of the texture. Because I was doing those jewelry embellishments, the texture would have gotten in the way of that, so I decided to go with the next best option, which for me was that beautiful seafoam green. So as I was setting up my petals, I just wasn't totally happy with the fit. So I decided to just on site cut some petals to fit the pattern as it was all set up and foiled, which I'm so happy I did because they fit so well after that. to tack my pieces in place. I put the crystal in the center just to get an idea on how she is fitting. Every stage, you always just wanna triple, double, you know, quadruple check that everything is all set. So I make sure to tack all my pieces in place. And then I also, when I'm soldering, I wanna make sure I don't go to the edges because I'm going to use a nice heavy duty zinc framing for her so I want to make sure I can get that frame on as easy as possible 
so that's why you'll see me not solder all the way to the edges. I also make sure to take the crystal out because I want to make sure I border the inside of that. Once I place my crystal in, there is no fixing anything, so I want to make sure everything is all buttoned up. All right, so it's time to make the zinc framing. She's looking pretty perfect, so it's time to tack her in place and then finish our soldering to the edges. I also know that I'm going to be patining this piece. I want her to be a copper. Now, your zinc framing, it just won't patina like other framing will. You need a specific patina, so I actually tin the edges so I can make sure I can get it nice and copper with my regular copper patina. And then I put these beautiful solder bubbles right on her to just give some added decorative detailing. I wash her up real good and now it is time to put that patina on. I'm going to be doing some more soldering on top of her, but I make sure to get my first layer of patina down. That way when I do solder, if there's some places underneath hard to reach places, those will already be patinaed for me. So I actually end up washing this piece a million times, re-patinating her a million times on new things that I add to her. All right, so for the kind of leafy design on the middle set of fingers, I take some copper wire and I put it on my needle nose pliers and I try to just make sure I put it on the same spot each time, making these beautiful little loops that I then kind of just flatten out to kind of represent the full viney look to her. And that's it. And I just do that a whole bunch. And now it's time to set the crystal in. So for this setting, I want it to be just kind of like a claw foot setting. I use some copper gauged wire. I make sure to bubble the ends of it so it has this nice soft kind of padding to it. And then it's just a matter of making these kind of even. I make sure that the actual ends of them go into those spaces that I have by the thumbs. I left those spaces there specifically so I could put the jewelry setting in like this. That way I know it's nice and sturdy. So the most difficult part of this was just making sure my little prongs were even on each side. Thank you. 
So we knew we wanted to create a frame for her. We wanted it to look a little worn out and kind of aged, but also really kind of airy and ethereal. So that's what we did. wanted beveled edges and I was on the fence I usually love just like the natural wood frame with some stain on it but we decided to go with a really pretty bright white because the piece itself is copper the white really makes that copper pop whereas the natural wood with stain would have made the piece a little darker so it just gives a really beautiful contrast with the patina that we decided to use but we wanted to make sure it looked a little worn out and we wanted it to have some wear to her, like kind of an antiqued look. So once she was finished, I took some sandpaper to her edges just to kind of buff her off and give her some scratches and some nicks. she came out we are so so excited about her her details that iridescence her frame just the whole shape of her I, we're just over the moon I hope you guys love her as much as we do thank you guys so much for watching and till next time